Hi everyone, Forest here with Honey Pots Zone 5 and it is winter. Actually, it's February, the month of love. And because it's the month of love, it's also the month of birding. And we're gonna start with making some bird feeders and then we're gonna go on to why I'm so big on birds and what I've done with them for the past 15 years. Okay, first, the bird feeders. I used old mandarin and clementine boxes. They're really great because the birds can get down in them. Yes, the squirrels do too. Y'all quit giving squirrels such a bad rap. They they need to eat. So what? They're eating bird food. You guys are spending a fortune on trying to keep something out. Same with gardening. You're always trying to keep something out. Stop that. It's like madness. It's like crazy. Um, so anyways, with the boxes, I use my Dremel, which love this. Amazing tool. Want to get more little gadgets for it. It's fun, easy to use. Uh, staple gun and of course, tape. Where would we be without this wonderful silver tape? Uh, first off, on this one, it is cardboard, so it's not going to last as long, but it's, it's kind of like coated. So depending on the weather, if it's going to rain, snow, whatever, what kind of moisture gets in there, how crazy the animals are on it, it should last a couple months into spring. I do have other feeders that I do, but during the great backyard bird count, which I'm going to tell you guys about, I like to have more feeders out. So anyways, Dremel, drill the holes. I drill holes in the side. This is kind of like a jute type of twine. This is made out of coconut husks, so it will decompose. Can throw that in the compost bin, but I can't throw this box. Then the mesh bag that the fruit comes in, save that because you're going to tape it or staple it down to the bottom so your seeds won't go through the holes. Okay, same thing on this one, this wooden one, drilled holes. There's also holes along the edges here in the box. And then stapled this jute inside there so it would stay nice and tight. Uh, this right here I had to tape down because the mesh really was like a piece of paper with a little piece of mesh on top. So I needed to tape that down rather than staple it. And the first one, my uh, corn husk twine was kind of four feet, is a little bit too long. So the second one, I made it three feet. It really doesn't matter. Don't get too anal about this. Just get something out there for everyone to munch on, especially during those winter months. Uh, the seed that I like to use is the um, sunflower seed. This is really nice. Uh, most birds like it. I found that like using the mixed seeds, the cheaper seeds um, it had like a lot of grasses in it and stuff and the birds would kick it out anyways to get at these guys. I've also tried the Niger seeds and they just ignore it. It rots. Yeah, pretty much. I got like the finch tubes and they rotted. I, I found that also with bird feeders. Try not to get anything that's too bowl-like because it'll retain the moisture and then the birds, they don't want to eat it because it, it like gets all sticky and it kind of sticks together and it gets icky so um, just go for the cheaper feeders and replace them every year or two that's what I do you know the more expensive ones with all the contraptions trying to keep the squirrels out again it, it's just kind of crazy so um, I just go with a cheaper one that I can fill real easy is it easy for me to fill does it hold enough feed that I can get through a couple days without having to refill it so there's that and these are fun and easy to make and it's something you know that you're gonna have around anyways if you eat that kind of fruit so it works for me so anyways what are so important about the birds well the birds keep our um, ecological system going. They're part of the food chain. They also spread seeds. Um, they also fertilize the ground with their uh, feces. They also pollinate plants. Yes, uh, there's quite a few birds that pollinate plants out there. And actually just from them moving around your garden, um, they're going to help spread that pollen around as well and help our little pollinator friends out. Another thing that I do that I had mentioned earlier is the great backyard bird count. 
And that starts here right after the day after Valentine's Day. It starts on the 15th and goes through the 18th. Yep, this is the little calendar that I keep in my blue book I've been telling you guys about. This calendar is important. Um, it's something that you can refer back to next year for what you did this year. I got a lot of dust flying around here. I always do, don't I? Um, so anyways, you know, write it down on your calendar so you don't forget. So what the heck is that about? Well, you know, it's a great thing, especially if you have kids. And, of course, you guys know I homeschooled, so I use it as a, a homeschool thing um, where it's it's like a science-based thing. You're collecting data, and then you're inputting the data into the computer. Don't get intimidated by it. It's so simple. I'm going to link the website down below. They give you uh, detailed information on how to do it. Uh, what I did um, my first year, my kid and I, well, my kid, my son, he's a big boy now. Um, we sat on the counter next to where the bird feeder was and ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And we counted the birds. I had gotten some birding books from the library and they helped, you know, tremendously to identify the birds uh, if not, get your computer out, go to the Great Backyard Bird Count 2019, and they do have a listing there, that which is extensive. It gives photos of the male and female birds, uh, so you can tell the difference between them. The males are the pretty ones. They are. Um, they have all the color and stuff. Like, in, in the Cardinals, you know, the male is really, really red, and the female has, like, a greenish... Uh, tawny color to her. I still think she's very pretty, but you know, that's me. Um, but like their little mating ritual is so cute and I've seen it so many times now. I mean, I've been doing it for 15 years. So, um, the male does like this little feeding ritual where he'll feed. I've seen him feed like a couple females. He's kind of checking the girls out, picking one out to be his mate and um, they just sit and wait and let him feed them. So the guy does all the work. So, but he's also the good looking one too. So there's a little bit of a trade off. But anyways, so they have like an extensive list there to kind of help you um, tell the difference uh, within the species. Like there's a lot of sparrows and like um, the... I can't think of their name. But uh, anyways, they've, they have a nice list there. Um, they team up, the, the Great Backyard Bird Count is done between the Audubon Society and the Corneal Lab of Ornithology, and there's a group up in Canada now, and I think this is worldwide, um, I'm pretty sure, and then you can go back later, you can see, um, uh, your state, how it did, you know, how many people in your area do it, you can do it from your home, you can go to a park and do it. Um, I know it's through the 15th through the 18th, but you only have to do it um, once if you want to, or you can do it several times. Okay, so what do they do with all this data? Well, they do a lot with it. They find out migratory patterns, um, mating um, patterns and issues. They also, uh, there's been like some diseases that have been going through different types of birds where they want to keep a record of that. You know, are the birds making a comeback from that? Um, are they not? Are they depleting in numbers? You know, what's seen more often? What's seen least? Um, it's really, really cool. They, I think they also have like the bird calls on there so you can listen to the bird calls, but they want you to see the bird uh, within that specific location around the feeder to do the count. But you can see that at the uh, website that I'm gonna provide for you guys at the bottom. So I know a lot of information, but it's a great thing to do. It's a fun thing to do. Uh, what I do is in, in the morning, put my coffee on, make my breakfast, and the birds feed in the morning. Um, I've noticed, you know, no matter where I lived at in Georgia, uh, I lived in several places in Georgia, and then up here, birds are AM feeders. That's when they are at uh, the feeder the most, where you're gonna find, you know, your larger counts, um, especially during migration and mating. They're going to find your larger counts. And also during the mating season, because the males are more colorful, it's easier to tell them apart um, within the species. Because 
finches. That's what I was thinking. Purple finches and house finches. There's a purple finch. There's a house finch. Two different um, types, same uh, species. But the you could see on their website the difference um, in those birds. So you guys like subscribe enjoy have fun with the bird count kiss your kiss your loved ones uh this valentine's day and i will see you guys in the next video